Hello, everyone. David Coleman, Director of the Whitliff Collections at Texas State University, and welcome back to Whitliff Wednesdays. Now that we're in September, students are here, classes are in full swing, and there's always a lot to see at the Whitliff. In celebration of this year's Hispanic Heritage Month, one of our new displays celebrates a recent acquisition of some wonderful material related to the Chicano movement in San Antonio in the 1970s. Here's our literary curator, Steve Davis, to tell us more. Thank you, David. And it's my pleasure to introduce you all to Mr. Rolando Cortez. Rolando was a college student in San Antonio in the early 1970s, just as this great Chicano movement was flowering in the city. And he got swept up in those times and became involved. He co-founded and co-operated this cool community bookstore in San Antonio called Penca Books which hosted events and brought in notable writers such as Rudolfo and Aya for public readings. And Pinka Books also ended up publishing its own uh, books that contributed to the Chicano literary canon. And Rolando Cortez managed to acquire and hang on to and preserve many, many books that were uh, personally inscribed to him. And in the years since those times have become exceedingly rare. So we are really privileged and honored that he is a new donor to the Wood of Collections. And I think it's time for us to hear more about all of this from him. I was interested in Chicano literature, I think dating back to when I was in high school. Uh, I would uh, actually write reports uh, on the, at that time was the Mexican American experience as opposed to the Chicano experience, which came later. And uh, I know that in writing these reports, um, there was a, uh, it was rare to find books that, that depicted our experience. And I, I knew that there was a void. I recognized the, the importance of, of continuing this, this, this process. So we, we bought the bookstore and expanded it from there and became Penka Books. I would say the bookstore found me. Back in the 60s and 70s, I mean, it was really a, a time of activism. There was a lot of uh, movement for social justice and political empowerment. There's a lot of things going on at the time uh, that made it uh, inspiring for me. I felt that it was not only inspiring change, but it also um, instilled pride. That it was something that was written in our language that we could identify with that, that affirmed our, our culture. A typical day at Penka Books was not typical because it was, it was uh, anything could have happened. Anyone could have walked in. There was a person by the name of Max Martinez uh, who became the author of, uh, or wrote several books, the, Bolivia, the monologue of the Bolivian major and uh, the adventures of the Chicano kid, just to mention a few. He would come in daily and he would sit, come in with his, with his coffee in hand, his cigarette in another, and just sit there and tell me about the, what he wrote the night before and everything. And so because of the uniqueness of our, our bookstore, the fact that we were co-located with people that were very high profile and, 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 and renowned in their own ways, uh, we had a lot of people come in and visit us on a daily basis. A lady uh, walked in maybe in her 50s. She browsed around after she picked out the book she was gonna purchase. I gave her the bill and she paid me with her check. The person happened to be Emma Tenayuca, and Emma Tenayuca is a person that was uh, the, the spearhead of the pecan sheller strike back in the 30s. I asked her, uh, are you Emma Tenayuca, you know, kind of naively, and, and she says, her response was, what do you know about her? You know, after a brief conversation, she said, yes, I am. And I was really surprised. And again, I wish I had had a camera so I could have taken a picture. In fact, I was uh, tempted not to cash the check just for posterity reasons, you know. <laughs> we started getting visitors come in and visit us. A lot of them were the authors or writers or poets. And uh, they started, of course, autographing books to me. The one that's uh, displayed here at the, at the Whitliff is from Ricardo Sanchez on his one of his books called Hechizo Spells. And he actually writes a lot of stuff, including draws a picture and everything. When I look at it, I think a lot of times, you know, yes, we were servicing the community and we were there for the community and, and, and we were the cultural center for the community. The importance was also towards the writers because I think the fact that they saw their books being uh, sold and promoted 
uh, you know, I think it inspired them to, to, to continue creating, to continue writing. So a, lot, a lot of these books are uh, put together, you know, by, by the authors themselves. So it was kind of a mutual benefit, you know, they inspired me and hopefully they were inspired by us by, by promoting their, their, their works. I had always known that I was going to donate these books uh, to a university or an institution of higher learning. I just wasn't sure to whom. I have a, a young son that graduated from Texas State University. Uh, so I decided to uh, start to inquire. And within a short period of time, I knew that this was the right match for, for what I wanted to do. But I feel extremely fortunate that the Whitliff was, and Penka books were a good match, and I'm really happy that they're here.